It's a new day and a new t-shirt, and now we're just going to jump right on into talking about security. This is a fairly technical subject, and we're going to talk about a lot of the basic security features you'll need to understand here, including encryption, <laughs> the kill switches, the no-logs policies, IP and DNS leak protection, security protocols, that one's a bit going to be a bit of an explanation, <laughs> obfuscated servers, and onion over VPN. Now, let's talk about what encrypted data is exactly. It's just information, but made uh, made so it's not a easily able to be read. You need a special decryption key to read the information. So, for example, you could say, Hi, we are talking about VPNs today. And depending on how things are encrypted, it might look like this. So, yeah. That information, as you can see, is really tough for any person to read in any computer to parse unless they have the decryption key. And breaking decryption keys is really, really hard these days. So let's talk about what encryption does and doesn't do just so to make sure we've got everything straight. Encryption secures your connection from hackers and other third parties so long as the data is traveling between the VPN and the website you're browsing to more or less. Uh, it does keep your data private along that route. However, it does not give you access to sites. It has nothing to do with ac uh, you know, accessing sites in other countries, that sort of thing. It's just a security measure. And it does not secure the data that you have submitted to sites. So if you use a VPN to go to Amazon and buy something with your credit card, you'd better hope Amazon doesn't get hacked because the encryption will do nothing to protect your data from getting hacked. It only protects your data while it's in transit. Let's talk about kill switches. These just disconnect you from the internet if your VPN connection drops. That's it. Now, this feature is fantastic for overall security, but very annoying for casual users. Most people will want to turn it off. It simply wor works like this. Your data is prote uh, protected and the VPN drops out. But if that VPN server stops working, then all your internet stops working. It's a very simple feature and very useful for people who definitely don't want to leak even a single byte of data. But it's, you know, it's terribly frustrating for regular users, regular people. Just putting that out there. Next up, let's talk about no logs policies. Basically, it just means that it doesn't co collect your browsing data. Now, this is something to keep in mind. All internet service providers keep track of your browsing data. Every website you've been to, every so-called deep web website you've been to, every online gambling site, every ad you've ever clicked, every adult site you might have accidentally clicked on, I'm sure everyone does that once in a while. <laughs> Everything you've ever done or read, it gets collected by your internet service provider. And many of them straight up sell that information to other companies. And even if they don't, even if they don't sell that information, they will definitely hand it over to, say, law enforcement. So what a no-logs policy does for you is it protects you in the event that someone hacks the VPN, that someone tries to force the VPN to hand over your information, legally or illegally. It protects all of your online activity from being discovered and used against you. This is useful for anyone who likes privacy, period. It's useful for people who don't want to be tracked so much. It's useful for things like civil disobedience or reporting on corruption or reporting on criminal organizations. It's basically very useful for reporters in dangerous places. It's useful for people who do legal stuff, you know, who just don't want it all found out. A no-logs policy means that when any organization, law enforcement or otherwise, comes knocking on your VPN's door, they can just say... We don't have that information. We just don't have it. Next up, let's discuss DNS leak protection. This isn't a super essential feature for most people. DNS leaks are things that can happen when you switch networks. So if you go from one Wi-Fi network to another, or go from Wi-Fi to your Ethernet, uh, some of your DNS requests, uh, that is your brow basically your browsing activity, which websites you go visit, can get accidentally leaked through non-protected non connections for the half a second or less that it takes your VPN to switch over from using one network to the other. 
That's just something to keep in mind uh, for the super security conscious reader. And now we're going to discuss VPN protocols. Buckle up, because this one's going to take a minute. So first, for the non-technical people, I'd like to discuss what a protocol is. Well, just like in the non-digital world, a protocol is just a set of instructions. So let's say, for example, that you have caught the worst person in the world stealing your lunch at work, because that's what they are, they're the worst. So you go to your manager and you say, all right, I caught the worst person stealing my lunch. What can we do about this? And so, you know, um, your manager goes gets his, and gets his big book of rules or protocols. And it says, in the event of a lunch thief, give him one, exactly one, warning. And if he does not comply and stops stealing lunches, set him on, <clears throat> fire him. Now, don't, don't do any of that other stuff, but like, fire him. Because no one should get more than one warning for lunch stealing. So, in digital terms, in terms of computers, that's all a protocol is. It's a set of instructions, but usually it's a set of instructions on how to handle information. The transfer of information, specifically. So... You may have heard of something called FTP, or the File Transfer Protocol. Literally all that is, is when one computer connects to another computer and says, Hey, do you have any files I can download? Or can I upload some files to you via the File Transfer Protocol? And if the other computer is set up for the fire, File Transfer Protocol, then it knows what to do. It says, yes, here is the directory full of files that you can download, or Here's the place where you can up your, upload your own files. Or, sorry, we don't allow that. Another protocol you might be very familiar with is the HTTP, or Hypertext Transfer Protocol. That's, that's four. That's four. Um, no, Hypertext is one word. Whatever. Doesn't matter. The point is, the Hypertext Transfer Protocol is when one computer asks another, Hey, do you have any web pages to show me? And if it's a web server hosting websites, then it goes, heck yeah, here's some web pages. And that's all it is, just sets of instructions for transferring information. Now, VPN protocols, obviously, are about transferring information in a secure and encrypted way. But it should be noted, there are several of them. So, yeah, that's what we're talking about now. The thing to know about VPN protocols is that some prioritize security while other prior others prioritize speed. You know, they still encrypt the data, but they're trying to do it faster and not necessarily in the most secure way because people want to see their... Oh, let's pick another... Crunchy roll <laughs> for those of you who like anime. Okay. And uh, most VPNs let users switch between different protocols depending on their needs. OpenVPN is the most common one and is the most... Re it's the re recommended protocol for most uses. It should be noted, though, that some VPNs have their own private protocols that they've been developing. ExpressVPN, in particular, and others have de developed protocols specifically for streaming and things like that. Circling back to the protocols that are better for streaming, though, uh, keep an eye on ones like WireGuard and Lightway. And before I forget, let's talk about obfuscated servers. These are literally designed to just hide the fact that you're using a VPN. Uh, they can be useful for, you know, the really strict streaming services like Netflix that don't want you using a VPN. But they're also good for, you know, those countries where VPNs are banned. They're good for getting around those little <laughs> pesky firewalls and things and VPN detection technology. Then there's Onion over VPN. It's uh, VPN servers that are designed to work over the Tor network, that is, the Onion router. You know, that network that's designed to anonymize your browsing, but really needs a VPN to properly secure everything. People have been tracked via the un, uh, via Tor, it's sad to say. So, you know, if you're going to use Tor, be sure to use a VPN in conjunction with it. And a VPN that specifically supports Tor uh, wouldn't hurt. Just saying. Well, that's it for VPNs and security. Thank you for watching. Uh, go ahead and like and subscribe if you found this video helpful or useful. We would greatly appreciate it. Click the bell icon if you feel like it. And I hope you have a great day. This is Ezekiel Bruni, signing out.